Good morning all and Jai Sadguru Dev. Sarved is the heart of Vihangam Yoga. Chanting its dohe brings harmony and peace to our soul and mind and keeps us in the path of the righteousness. Today we have a renowned speaker, Dr. Subhash Ji, who has been reading Sarved for a very long time. And uh, let's hear from him what Sarved is and uh, some of the Sarved dohas and how we can be benefited from its wisdom. Over to you, Dr. Subhash Ji. Thank you all for uh, joining today's satsang. Thank you, Navy, for organizing this satsang without a break. And today's host, Raviji, Ishaji, and everyone else. Uh, my pranam to everyone else who has joined today. I hope I'm clear and uh, audible. So, so today's survey the couplet that uh, we are going to discuss is from the second mandal, second chapter and seventh couplet. Surati nirati ke rupame abda kare parve manakataba biman sabha Mite Jagata Bharam Vesha. These couplets are couplets of experience. By trying to explain these couplets in words is doing injustice. because no words can define these experiences in the form they really come across. So for those, including me, who are still in the early stages of Vihangam Yoga, let's begin with the basics and then we understand gradually every word of this couplet and uh, take it from there. So we have all been talking about Dasam door, 10th door or the 11th window or 11th door. So let's once again revisit rest of the nine doors that we have. So the nine doors that we have in this mortal frame, in this body, two eyes, two nostrils, two ears, one mouth, one anus, and one genital. What these nine doors does, it keeps us connected with the environment around us. So when we say it keeps us connected, what is us? What am I? Am I only this mortal frame made of muscles, bone, skin, cartilages, connecting with the environment, with the sense organs and executing daily tasks as a human being through these nine doors. So what am I? So if I say that I am the soul, so in this mortal body, do I still have the soul? Yes, because without the soul, 
and its conscious energy, the body will have no function. We will have everything, the hands, feet, mouth, all the sense organs, but still we won't function. So there is a dissipation of the conscious energy of the soul through these doors in the external environment. When we talk about chatushtha antah karan, which are man, that is mind, buddhi, intellect, chit, memory, ahankar, ego. So all these exist. All these are manifesting with their qualities. The qualities that they come across is only because of the soul. So as we have discussed in the previous uh, session, that soul has eight suratis. Surati is the conscious force of the soul. We also discussed or talked about that seven out of those are in this world, in this materialistic, uh, inert, uh, worldly environment. We are connected with the help of those seven. Because if we did not have the soul, we did not have that conscious energy connecting us with the environment, then we won't exist. So soul is still functioning, it is still there. So when we look at the couplet, once again, we go back to the discussion of Surati Nirati Ke Roop Mein. So Surati is the conscious force of the soul. When we say Surati Nirati Ke Roop Mein, means that conscious form, when transforms into Nirati, only then it enters the world, it enters the zone of supreme bliss. So first we understood soul as we have always known, and then it's conscious energy about which Swamiji says in Swarveda, Surya Kiran Duradesh Me Jai Prakashit Hoi Chetana Stama Surati Hai Sahaj Gagana Gama Soi Surya Kiran Duradesh Me The same way, sun is so distant from us and we still have the rays of the sun that illuminates the earth. So Surya Kiran Duradesh Me Jai Prakashit Hoi in the same manner, Chetan Astam Surati Hai. So Swamiji has further broken down in this discussion that the conscious energy of the soul, because the soul is a conscious entity, but the eighth part of that conscious entity, so the ray of the sun, the way the ray of the sun illuminates the earth in the same way, Let's say soul has eight rays. And when the eighth ray is the dominant ray, when it is vivid, when it is present, when it is manifest, when it comes to its full force, because 
the rest seven are sedentary or have been silenced, then that force is nirati. And that nirati enters the Chetan Mandal or the Sabd Mandal and experiences the sub, the Chetan sound. So it is said that after the deep meditation and continuous practice at the fourth level and before the fourth level Again, recapping other levels, we know that by practice of the first level of Vihangam Yoga, our sense organs are purified and restrained. By the second stage or the second level, mind is purified and it becomes peaceful. And by the third level, pranas are purified. Along with that, the intellect is purified and we become capable of realizing Atma. So what about the fourth stage? So when we talk about the body, the body Ran and mind the body, pran and mind are joined together by the light of consciousness. And as we move along in this upward direction, we start dissociating from our consciousness the body, pran, and mind. So, at the third level, we discuss that the pranas are purified and intellect is also purified. And when we reach the fourth level, the mind and prana dissolve in their origin, lose their potency and strength in the Akshat Brahma. And here in this zone of Akshat Brahma, soul's consciousness is separated from the physical chaff. So we are saying that the soul's consciousness is separated from the physical chaff. But that doesn't mean that its qualities won't go along with the soul because we are still in the mortal body, in the mortal frame, with the chatushtya antakaran. So even if we have been capable of that separation and dissolution, so there is a still those qualities are associated the qualities are associated with our soul even till the end so then when we talk about the continuous practice at the fourth level of the akshar brahm the consciousness is pulled further up and that results when the consciousness is pulled further up it is pulled because it has become more shuksham. It has let down, it has let go all other associations, the physical chaff, and even the conscious energy that we call in terms of saptam surati. And then the astam surati, the eight, the nirati, it is, it reaches, it attains, it perceives, it feels. 
the pervading consciousness of the Supreme Brahma. And here the soul experiences a brilliant light which is very soothing and a sound which is resounding over every part of the body which submerges the soul in a eternal bliss. So as we look at the couplet, we know that surati nirati ke roop mein, as I discussed, shabd kare parvesh. So when we talk about shabd kare parvesh, we are talking about it further ascending up and joining the pervading consciousness of the Supreme Brahma. Experiencing that soothing light, Sital Ravi, and that vibratory sound, beyond that vibratory sound, and the soul has that, feels that blessing, which is not describable. It cannot be described in words. It is all about the experience. Until you experience, you don't know what it is. Man ka tab abhiman sab. Man, mind, abhiman, ego, arrogance. So a common question arises that since we dissolved our mind at the fourth stage itself, and then we are ascending up, then how come we still have that aviman? How come we still have the ego associated with us when the man has already been dissolved in Akshar Brahm? But you will also have to remember that man is the most difficult of all the entities to leave our body or leave our functionality, leave our functionality. Now, that is the reason why Swamiji always emphasizes on the first stage of Vihangam Yoga that even he had to do practice the first stage for three years, because if you have not practiced it thoroughly, if you have not controlled your mind the way it should have been controlled, then its attributes, its qualities will still be associated with you no matter how higher you go up. And that is the reason why, as we know and we discussed that the soul has a unique characteristic and that unique characteristic is to feel is to identify itself with whatever it is in. When it is in the body, it identifies itself with the body, that the soul is the body. That is the reason why we know ourselves as our body. We don't remember ourselves as a soul. Even if we remember, it's very transient. How many times we have taken care of our soul? emphasizing that soul is all that uh, of utmost importance. We always talk ourselves, talk about ourselves in terms of our body. Now, in this description, Shabd Kare Parvesh, when the Nirati is in that eternal bliss, when it merges with that Brahma, it identifies with the Brahma and it gains or it perceives that it has gained the quality of the Brahma. So the soul's finite consciousness, finite consciousness is merged into the infinite supreme consciousness of the God and slowly acquires all the qualities of vast knowledge and superb divine powers. 
there have been explanations of rishis in Atharvaveda who have ex described their experience from that stage in these words. I am infinitely great. I am infinitely strong in the powers of my soul. The power of my eyes, ears, pran, apan, vyam, all are infinitely increased. I am infinite in everything. But the soul is still finite. It is not infinite in everything. Those are the qualities of Brahma. But with this merge where the soul associates and feels those qualities, that is the time it's downgrade, downward flow, once again starts taking place. Then only with Sadhguru's blessings, the attributes of mana which is still attached with the soul, where it is being told as abhiman, ego, only with Sadhguru's blessings, the soul understands that it is not Brahma. And then the last part of the couplet, Mite Jagat Bharam Vesh. Mite means uh, palliated, alleviated, removed. Jagat, the worldly, Bharam, suspicion, confusion. So only with the blessings of that Almighty, blessings of Sadhguru Dev, in the cavalry stage, where the soul identifies with the Brahma, and then the soul says, Aham Brahmasmi. In my understanding, that is what the reference of Manka Tab Abhiman Sab. There, the presence of the Sadguru Deva, your savior. He directs you and lets you identify. He removes all the confusion that you are shining so bright in the fire. That does not mean you are the fire. You are still the iron which the iron which in, in association with the fire has the attributes of fire, but you are still the iron. So when that confusion is cleared by Sadhguru Dev, that is the essence that with that clearing of the confusion, the, the nirati uh, continues to experience that eternal bliss, that Sheetal Ravi. And so once again, this is a Bhadik, Vedic part of Vihangam Yoga in which you learn the importance of Sadhguru Sapta, without which, uh, without his presence, we need his presence uh, in every aspect. Even as we ascend for even the third stage of Vihangam Yoga, uh, without his blessings, that uh, door will not open. So with that, I will stop. And uh, as I understand, this is a question answer session. And uh, I will, uh, uh, the host will proceed from here. And I will try with the best of my ability to answer any questions posed. Yeah. So much thank you, uh, Dr. Subhashji. Yeah, the bridge is open now. Anyone uh, 
having any questions related to uh, this dohe, please uh, come forward and you may ask Dr. Subhash. Haji, I have a question. Thank you, <clears throat> Dr. Subhash ji. Really appreciate your insight on this. So the question is like, I have heard Swami ji jaise, you know, to, for some souls, Swami ji gave third, fourth Bhumi directly. Do they still have to keep doing first? Could you please shed some light? Because first is a foundation. And if somebody gets third or fourth, just say Amit Pal ji, you know, he got fourth Bhumi directly. Uh, if you can kindly share your wisdom on it. Yeah. Jai Sadhguru Dev, Jasvinder ji. And uh, it's a very vital question in the sense that uh, I have come across people who have been initiated with the fourth, fifth stage. And uh, at the same time, they all have been uh, experiencing the trouble due to man. They will say that when they are in the meditation, they feel the bliss. But at the same time, the worldly uh, attractions uh, still haunt them in some form or the other. So one of the key things that I have learned from them or heard from them that it is very important uh, never to let go the first stage. So what I have learned from them is that they begin the sadhan from the first stage. They do it for some time, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. And only then they move on to do the stages or the highest stage that they have been initiated with. Because uh, man, mind makes the devotees ponder even at the highest stage. So controlling the mind is uh, something that one needs to do uh, relentlessly. Uh, thank you. I, I hope I shed some light. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Yes, if nobody has any question, I have one more question, if if you may permit. Yeah, sure. Good. Otherwise, I can ask in the last. So, Subhash ji, yesterday there was a beautiful question that came on the table. Ki when we have crossed all the stage and we got Hans Day, uh, which is, you know, at fifth Bhumi, then we are totally submerged into the divine. And then, you know, we are submerged in the divine for a some period of time. And then Ahankar seed sprout and a person start thinking about Ame uh, Brahmasmi. So now we have crossed, our mind is dissolved, our calm, krodh, mo, maya is also gone, our prana is also, you know, dissolved at the uh, Akshar Brahm, and then from there, there's nothing but uh, it's all niriti that is driving us towards the divine deeper and deeper. So how come, because this is the algorithm I need to crack, because that is where you can do the reverse engineering, what is going on right now, you know, and how I can protect right now from that ahem, which is going to appear again. And how can I prolong my stay with the divine force as long as I can? So how come that seed sprouts at that time? Or what is the process that happens? If you can kindly please, you know, elaborate on this. Thank you very much. 
Sure, I will uh, try to do my best. Uh, the best way to understand this would be how a soul came onto this earth. What happened to the soul that it got caught up in this worldly desire? We are looking for ascending from sthul, sukshma, karan, mahakaran, kavalle, and then hans, sharir, the six stages that we talk about. But let's see if there was an hans, because the soul which had been freed, what made them come back in the body? So if you look at that, from hans, it's the kavalle sarir. So, as I was discussing that, uh, yes, we talk about the mind being dissolved. But if you're not in the molecular form, you are still in this earth, sitting down in a quiet place and doing meditation. So you are still having this mortal frame and chatushtyantahkaram and everything that makes you. And this is one of the qualities. And there are many qualities which I was discussing of mind, which is attached. Even if the mind is dissolved, the attributes are still attached. And so, as I also discussed that uh, one of the qualities of the soul is to associate itself with whatever it is. Uh, one of the quality of the soul, soul's consciousness, is to identify itself with whatever attributes. So when we say aham or the ego, see, it's very precise. It's not ego about the body. It's not an ego about uh, the house. I have the biggest house. It's not ego about uh, being most beautiful. It's ego about the unique characteristic of the soul of identifying itself with whatever it is associated with at that time. So when in association with Brahma, the moment this identification takes place and when the soul's conscious energy or the soul perceives. Now why it is perceiving? Because you are still in the mortal body. You are sitting in your room. You are meditating. So you have elevated yourself, but you have not gotten rid of all of those. You have elevated yourself. You have moved from one zone to the other zone. But it's not that, that the body and everything else has gone for good. It has gone because you have made it go away. But it is still there. Unless we are talking about when Sadhguru Sadhafal Devji Maharaj left his mortal body and then there was a Akashwani depicting the fact that uh, yogi bina vani ke bolta hai, yogi bina kano ke sunta hai. So if that was the stage where you are deprived of all those things in that purest form, we are not talking about that. We are talking about one of the qualities of the soul that with the supreme soul, with the Brahma, instead of feeling finite, it starts feeling that he is, it is infinite. And that has been labeled as an ego. But if you look at precisely when an ego is present, ego has to be present for everything. But it keeps talking about this unique characteristic in the Kavala stage that is Aham Brahmasmi. Because of the association and the feeling of the infiniteness. And there, if 
that feeling prevails and you are not directed. No one is grabbing your hand to take you from the right direction to the left and whatnot. Then the descent continues from Kavale to Mahakaran, Karan, Sthul, Sukshma, Sthul. So there we talk about the role of the Sadhguru Dev in that mandal, in that zone, where he reminds you, reminds the soul, that soul is finite, you are finite. It is this current energy, it is this infinite per Brahma in association with whom you are feeling that. So even if we keep saying Abhiman and ego, it's not the ego in its form that we talk about when we talk about Chatushtya Antakaran. It's because of that association. And uh, once Sadhguru redirects, that association becomes clear once again to the soul to move to the Hansa stage. Did I explain it to some extent, Jaswinderji? Hanji, Hanji. You know, I'm, I'm very much interested in this question. I think this algorithm I need to break. So I'm collecting your views. So Jaswinderji, what happened to Swamiji? Someone asked me, कि स्वामी जी मैं आपके पास सब कुछ छोड़ कर आया हूं तो स्वामी जी कहते हैं अभी सब कुछ छोड़ा नहीं है आपने तो गुणा को छोड़ना है यू नो जो हमारे कैन यू इलैबोरेट ऑन इट व्हाट डज एग्जैक्टली मीन हमारे अंदर जो आई थिंक इज इट बीइंग रेफर टू तमोगुण सतोगुण रजोगुण उनको भी छोड़ देना है डज इट मीन दैट आदमी आदमी फॉर एग्जांपल आदमी कहता है कि मैं घर छोड़ दिया पैसे छोड़ दिए फैमिली छोड़ दी और मैं सब कुछ छोड़ के त्याग के आपके पास आया हूं और मेरे को मोक्ष का रास्ता दिखाइए तो देन स्वामी जी सेड टू दैट पर्सन तो तुमने अभी गुणा नहीं छोड़े यू हैव लेफ्ट समथिंग बट यू हैव तो गुणा को छोड़ने से ही Moksh ki prapti mil sakti. Can you please elaborate on that if you don't mind? Because it is something linked to this. I'm trying to figure it out, you know. I will do my best based on what I understand to uh, discuss this. If you remember, I gave one of my examples that I went to ashram and uh, at a very early age that I have renounced everything and uh, I've come here to be, to be a part of the ashram and devote myself to the ashram. So yes, in the material world, everything was renounced for, uh, on the superficial level, but the core characteristics were not renounced. And I also discussed that there were teachers there. So, one of the teacher started talking about uh, the difference between uh, uh, ashram parivar and shevaks like me. Now, if I was someone who had renounced everything, those difference, those uh, emotions that were created by mere words should not have happened the emotion in me that, oh yes, this teacher is saying it right. Why this difference? But who perceived this difference? It means I still have those traits, those inherent qualities. So for namesake, I have left everything. My ego, my worldly belongings and possessions. But in reality, when someone said that, it affected me. And I discussed in a different way to Sadhguru Swatantra Devji Maharaj. So even if I had came giving up everything, but my desires, the inherent desires, that were not renounced. Leaving the worldly possessions is very easy. 
but getting rid of those quality, the worldly qualities, kam, krod, mad, lov, mo, matsar, all these qualities, it's very difficult to get rid of them. So until and unless you get rid of all of them, it's not you who has come to the ashram to get renunciation, to get salvation. It's just your body. It's just your body that you have brought to the ashram, but your man, your mind is still associated with everything else. In the same manner, a mook yogi, uh, there's another word for them, those who uh, say that uh, I want to speak, I won't be speaking for one week. So this way, without speaking, I'm renouncing a part. Or uh, it shows that I can survive without speaking. That is a good quality. But no, there's a difference between not speaking and not having the desire to speak. So if that yogi is waiting every day for the seventh day, that when will the seventh day come, then I can start talking again, then that is not monvrat. That is not the silence. That is not the real renunciation that we are referring to or we are talking about. So renunciation has to be not only in man vach karma. It, is, it goes beyond that, not just in vachan, not just in speech, karma, not just in action but it goes beyond that in which the inner desire should also go away. Similar example of uh, one of the sansmarans is uh, that Swamiji has a sevak uh, who was in the ashram and uh, Swamiji told that sevak, uh, Kolkata jana hai. Sevak didn't ask anything, he said, okay. Because he has given up all the reasonings ki mein Kalkatta kab jaunga, kaise jaunga, train se jaunga, padal jaunga, ticket lunga, all these will be the game of the mind. So if he has kept his mind to himself, then it means he has not yet renounced it. So the example was that the moment Swami C said Kalkatta jana hai, he stood up and he started walking. Swamiji said, Ki ye to kaise And I'm not quoting exact words. I don't remember exact words. But I just have the essence in my mind. So, then he said, Swamiji, logo se puchte ho chale jayenge. फिर हुआ कि खाना पीना कैसे करेंगे कहाँ रहेंगे आप हमें जी कहीं किसी के भी घर में दरवाजा खिटखिटा के बोलेंगे कि अगर वो हमको सोने दे वहाँ सो जाएंगे घर के बाहर और वैसे ही कहीं भिक्षा मांग के भोजन कर लेंगे तो दिस इज एन एग्जांपल ऑफ ए पर्सन हु हैज रियली रिनांस्ड एवरीथिंग Renounced questioning because the main problem I see we all face into is because of questioning. Using our intellect, not knowing that the science of Vihangam Yoga is beyond intellect. That was the example of a sadhak who didn't even question kaha jana, uh, kaise jana, kya khana, kaha tikna. And Swamiji says it in the other way in his uh, sayings. Khana jana, pina jana, sona jana, but nahi jana, kaha hai jana. So, what I want to emphasize is that uh, renunciation and saying that I have left everything uh, is not the way people say about it. And those who have renounced it, they don't talk about it. Why? Because they have renounced in the feeling that he is almighty. He knows it all. He knows what I am, what I have renounced, what I have not renounced. 
So if I'm capable enough, if I have moved that far and with renunciation, then he will be stretching out his arms. That is what they say that yad and daya up. You take one step towards Sadhguru and he embraces you uh, with love and uh, uh, everything. So that is my understanding here that uh, just saying that I gave up this, I gave up that, it doesn't amount to anything until and unless you have converted yourself into that sevak uh, who is just there next to Sadhguru Dev without thinking about his sleep, his food, his day-to-day -day activity and uh, whatnot. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Back thank to you. you. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, Subhajji. Really appreciate it. So uh, just moving to the next, uh, um, you know, the uh, slide here is, uh, we'd like to inform you that Navy is proud to announce that it is a, um, conducting a warrior of week. Uh, we all know the best time to meditate is Brahmurat between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m. But most of all, us fail to do that. To encourage this, Navy started this event where participants join the WhatsApp group called Brahmurat Warrior. Each participant practice Brahmurat meditation on their own. There is no session to join. Once you are done with the meditation, you can send us the status to the group as done. If you are interested to join this group and uh, want to do meditation in the Brahmurat time, you may um, ping me or you may send me a text message. I'll, I'll add you that, uh, to that group. So warrior of the week this uh, time is Suryaram Rajuji, Tejinder Ji, Yogesh Shishagar Ji, Rajesh Shishagar Ji, Bhagwati Patel Ji, and Sri Rang Ji. Uh, thank you so much. And inductees of the week is Ranjani Ji, Amit Talikar Ji, Geet Ji, Maya Ji, Rashmi Ji, Raj Gupta Ji, Dev Ji, Dipti Ji, Vinita Ji, and Lalmani Ji. Uh, you all are our inspirations and hopefully we, someday we also start. So <clears throat> now we have reached to the last phase of today's workshop. In this phase, we will chant the sort version of Shanti part. In the Shanti part, we chant for peace for everyone who exists in this universe. May Sadhguru Dev bless the entire cosmos with peace, love and prosperity. I would now request Isha ji to recite the last few lines of Shanti part for us. Thank you Ravi ji. Shanti part. He Prabhu Shanti Swaroop Ho Shanti Shanti Mai Shanti 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 Jan Shanti Ho Purna Shanti Mai Shanti He Prabhu Shanti Pradhan Kar Dure ho sarva shanti Deva sada pal shanti mai Shanti, shanti, sukh shanti Bholi Sadguru Dev Bhagwan ki jai Back to Ravi ji yeah. Uh, thank you, Isha ji, uh, for, uh, for singing uh, uh, the ending prayers, Vandana, Arti, and Santipat. And I would like to thank all of you for joining this uh, session um, and encourage everybody to ponder over the topics we discussed today. Uh, would like to request to go through the survey Doha, what we have discussed and understand the, the core spiritual knowledge which is there, how the surti becomes nirti, what is bhakti, what we have discussed today. 
and uh, I would like to thank special thank to Dr. Subhash ji for beautifully explaining Sarve Doha bits and pieces and hope everybody learned from it and uh, it will help us in our daily meditation. And thank you Isha ji for um, you know your uh, melodious voice for your prayers to Lord Sadhguru Dev and uh, Tejinder ji and Jaswinder ji and uh, Niranjan ji for asking beautiful questions and sharing your uh, informations and your knowledge. Navy has been conducting this uh, Sunday virtual satsangs and Vyangam Yoga Institution work workshop all over USA and North America over the last few years. Any queries related to this can be sent us via an email at info at vyangamyoga.org I would also like to thank um, all uh, members who have just joined the session and make, made it as a successful. Till that, um, see you next Sunday at 10.30 uh, a.m. Eastern Standard Time in the same Zoom meeting. And uh, wish you all uh, a very happy Father's Day and uh, Jai Sadgurudev to all of you.